How are we doing today? Good, I just did some math in my head and we are officially 25 days away from the start of the new school year. Uh, yeah, <laughs> as anticipated, some yays and some boos. So um, uh, let's uh, go ahead and stand and worship for our Lord today and, and get ourselves in a position where we can accept um, what Jesus is offering today. Jesus is always willing to give and it's, it's our opportunity and our job to make sure that we are accepting what he is giving us every single day.
we remember throughout this week that your love truly does never fail. Your love is not conditional. It's not an if-then situation. It's an always situation. Your love truly never fails. And we can never thank you enough for that, Lord. Amen. Turn around and say hello to somebody next to you and ask them what year they were baptized in. Ask them what year they were baptized in. Well, as you all get settled this morning, uh, we want to say welcome to our 930 service. We are so glad you guys are here worshiping with us, uh, joining us as we engage our cities with Jesus' love and good news as we engage Jesus in worship uh, during our weekend messages and services. My name is Adam, along with my wife, Corey. Uh, we are excited to uh, be leading this church over the last eight and a half years. Um, God has been up to and been doing some amazing things in this church. But I'll talk about it here in just a little bit. One of the things that God is doing is uh, he's continually growing our online uh, influence and things like that. And so uh, we say welcome to those that watch online. They'll watch this later today or, or into the week uh, ahead. It's always a great way to catch up, too, if you guys uh, ever miss a service to come, to go ahead and, and watch online as well through Facebook, YouTube, the website, whatever you might do. Um, if you are newer with us this weekend or you've never filled one out before, would you do us a favor and scan that QR code on the seat back in front of you? Uh, simply pull up your smartphone. Um, you can do that now. It's a great way also to let us know of any prayer concerns or things going on in your life, to sign up for things, uh, small groups, baptisms, those kinds of things in the life of our church. We love when you guys do that. If you'd love to do a physical one, there are some physical ones on a connect bag if you got one today. Uh, there's also some physical ones near the offering boxes in the back of the room. You can always fill out a physical one and drop that in as well. Um, I hope you guys are getting um, our weekly emails to let you know what's happening, what's coming up, uh, the things that we've been doing. In fact, we just got done with a couple of really, really busy weeks um, where our, our youth um, have been uh, wrapping up their summer on Wednesday nights and they went kayaking and we had our, our monthly food distribution and um, our staff just went on a retreat. In fact, let me do that. Let me, I know we don't normally like pray during the announcement time, but I just want to pray. Um, we had an amazing time. There was uh, there was our staff and then a handful of volunteers. I think there was about 11 of us that went to Cincinnati this last week um, and was with our greater Vineyard family. Um, Vineyard USA, there's 500 and some odd churches in, in the United States and another couple thousand internationally. And we got a chance to just be with them um, to learn, to grow together, and things like that. Would you guys mind if I just pray over you, kind of a blessing from whatever we got this week, and, and give it back to you guys for a second? Um, so, Father, in the name of Jesus, I just I bless everybody that comes to this service and next service, everybody that watches online, that they would feel connected to our greater Vineyard Church family. Um, it has been amazing. It's been 50 years of your faithfulness, 50 years of your worship. 50 years of intimacy in your presence, and we got something amazing as we got to go away and experience it. But I pray that everybody that wasn't able to go would just be blessed in this moment right now by what the Vineyard has done for 50 years now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Guys, uh, it's just been incredible. It was incredible to, to worship and to celebrate um, 50 years of the Vineyard uh, churches in the United States of America and things like that. And uh, as a church family, we celebrate every year our anniversary, the things that God does over the last year. And one of the things God's been doing a lot of is seeing people come to him uh, for the first time or, or having a, a radical experience with him and giving their lives to him. And so we uh, uh, love to do baptisms. Uh, we, we used to only do them like once a year and then all of a sudden we started doing them twice a year. Now we're like, well, whenever we got people that are interested, let's just do baptisms. <laughs> um, and so we are actually uh, planning on opening, uh, to bring the baptism tank in and opening it up here in just a few weeks. Um, in August. So if you're interested in water baptism in any way, shape, or form, you have questions about it, make sure you talk to, to somebody on the team, uh, get prayer after the service, and, and talk to the person who prays for you. You can also do it through the Connect card, sign up for, for baptism that way as well through the website, um, because we just we want to celebrate again in August. We just think that God's got more people uh, that are wanting to give their lives uh, to Jesus this year. And so uh, if you have any interest or questions about that, please make sure you do that um, here soon. Uh, because August is going to be amazing and busy and awesome month, and uh, our new sermon series, you probably see these on your, on your uh, seats, uh, new invite cards for the new sermon series. They'll be starting here in just a couple of weeks after we get through the, the discipleship series. Um, we're very excited about this, and in the middle of that series, 
Uh, we'll be having baptisms as well. So take these, invite your family and friends, um, put them on, uh, put them with your tip. Don't don't give one of these out if you're not a good tipper. Like always, if you're like tipping at the restaurant, make sure that you you, you tip well when you invite somebody to come to church. With you. It's just a little tip for me. Get that? All right, sorry, dad joke. Good morning. Okay. Um, <laughs> why did they give me a microphone after I was gone all week? All right, here we go. All right. Um, uh, one last thing uh, before uh, we get into our, our talk here this morning. Um, guys, thanks so much for, for giving to the mission and vision of this place. Um, as we plant churches, gosh, we're going to send out our third one, uh, fourth one, whatever it is this year, um, to South Africa. As we plant churches, as we uh, engage our cities uh, through food boxes and through Thanksgiving food boxes, which we're starting to gear up for and think about as we do our, our Kingdom Kids and our youth ministries, as we um, love our cities well. Thank you guys so much for giving to this place. Um, we just consider it such a blessing to partner with you, um, with our time, our talents, and our treasure uh, to see God's kingdom come in this city, in Bloomington and Normal, in the surrounding city. So thank you guys for doing that. Uh, again, the easiest way to give is by doing it online. I know many of you do that or you have like a direct deposit. Thank you guys for doing that. But if you want to give something physically this morning, there's a couple of boxes on uh, right near the doors on your way out. Um, there's also another one in the lobby if you want to drop something physically off this weekend. But um, as a team, we can just never say thank you enough because of what you do. We get to do this. <laughs> you know, you are the ones that make this happen. Nobody else is doing it. There's not somebody out there, some rich benefactor dropping it in. It's you guys um, that make this happen. So thank you so much for giving to the ministry of this church. Um, we are in a disciple series, uh, a preach it series. Every summer, um, uh, Corey and I take a step back and, and study and read and prepare for the upcoming school year. Um, and there are voices that God has in our church that are really, really important that we want you guys to hear from. Because you don't get to hear from them regularly, uh, maybe in a small group setting or maybe on a Holy Spirit night. But on Sunday mornings, uh, they don't get a lot of opportunities to stand up here and teach you what God's been doing in them. And so you've heard now uh, so far from Tyler, you've heard from Rachel. And in fact, Rachel, why don't you come on up here? She's going to introduce our speaker here this morning. I'm going to turn it over to her and then we'll be back up to do ministry uh, after our speaker comes and celebrates. Well, good morning, everybody. So, um, for those of you who don't know, Kevin and I have a pretty cool, uh, fun God story of how we met. And obviously, I don't have time to go into that, but we'd love to share it with you if you ever get, if you ever get a minute. But he shared a piece of it last week of when we met, and I wanted to share a piece, just a quick piece this morning. So, have you ever heard that cheesy line when people meet, I met the man of my dreams, <laughs> right? Well, I can actually literally say that, like Woo! no joke, because <laughs> we, we got set up on a blind date that God set us up with that actually got started in Israel. And so it's a really cool story. But one thing that was really neat is what the day that I met Kevin, I, the day before, I had actually gone through all of my journals and read through, I'd been journaling for years, and I had read through the um, different things that I had prayed about my husband. And I actually re got reminded through reading my journals that I had had a dream, a literal dream, while I was sleeping two times, the same dream, two times, about six months apart, and I had completely forgotten about it. And in that dream, there was a man that, and you know, sometimes dreams represent not necessarily a specific person, but when I met Kevin the day that we got set up on our date, I, I looked out the window of my apartment, and I was like, oh, crap. That's him. <laughs> and I remember that he was literally this man that had been in my dream wow. two times before we met. So welcome, Kevin, the man of my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> and my feet aren't even sore. You guys know that pickup line that will pick up, are your feet sore? Because you've been running through my mind all day. <laughs> <laughs> running through a dream. This is great. Oh, man, I love that. <laughs> Please ask some other time about the story. We love telling it. Well, good morning, everybody. Good morning. Nice to see you. Nice to see you. Glad to be here. Um, just want to say thank you again for the opportunity to be up here to share. This is a privilege, absolute privilege to share. Um, but at the same time, it's a little difficult 
a little difficult to come up here sometimes because as like Rachel shared last week that you know when you lead worship in front of people it's very vulnerable it's very you're kind of sharing your insides and so it's difficult sometimes and then the, I think I can say this for all of us as speakers um, that uh, when we come up here we, we don't want just empty words yeah. just to fall on the ground we, right. we take that time to dig in deep, ask God's heart and to share his heart. And so we don't want it just to go on empty ears either. Right. You know, and so so there's a there's an interesting relationship in that speaking and in worshiping in front of others. And so um, so anyways, what I wanted to say here was uh, I want to make sure I stay with my notes here. <laughs> Remember Apostle Paul, he said, uh, don't speak empty words. Don't speak empty words. And uh, so there was a paradigm shift for me, uh, understanding that, oh, if there's empty words we can speak, then there should be full words that we can speak. Mm -hmm. So um, why not speak full words wherever we go, whatever we're doing? And so interesting fun fact, um, when the brain goes into fight or flight, um, the brain sends cortisol and adrenaline into the brain as a buffer, as a protection mechanism for whatever may be happening. And so when the brain gets to a place of peace, that adrenaline and cortisol washes away. And what the brain does is really interesting. It actually reaches down into the heart to pull up the chemicals it needs to process that event. Mm. Isn't that interesting? So when God spoke to, I want to go to my favorite verse in Isaiah, when he said, um, he said, uh, son, of uh, son um, hear with your heart, see with your eyes, the eyes of your heart, the ears of your heart. So I want to do a little shift right now. Sometimes it's kind of, you know, because we do this often, it's really easy for us to just kind of listen from this space, right. from our cranium, yeah. right? So we let it here and it just sits here. And so then it just becomes information. But today, why don't we, I mean, like from here on out, I'd like to say, let's shift gears. Let's set that aside and then reach down to our heart and listen with our heart ears. Come on. Let's listen with our heart ears and see with our heart eyes come on. what God has for us. Yeah, come on, it's a really interesting scripture. We're in, we're in Matthew 10. We're in Matthew 10, and um, here, let me just read it for you, and then, and then we'll get into it here. Uh, so I got this little snippet here in verse 26 to verse 33, Matthew 10, and this is what it says. So, have no fear of them, for nothing is concealed that will not be revealed, or kept secret that will not become known. What I say to you in the dark, tell in the light, and what you hear whispered in the ear, proclaim upon the housetops. And do not be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather, be afraid of him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Are not two little sparrows sold for a penny? And yet not one of them will fall to the ground without your father's consent and notice. But even the hairs of your head are all numbered. Fear not then. You are of more value than many sparrows. Therefore, everyone who acknowledges me before men and confesses me out of a state of oneness with me, I will also acknowledge him before my Father who is in heaven and confess that I am abiding in him. Mm -hmm. But whoever denies and disowns me before men, I also will deny and disown him before my Father who is in heaven. Mm -hmm. What does this mean? So for me, you know, just reading that just little snippet, it feels like I'm walking into a middle of a conversation, right? And so it's like, where's the context of this? How does this play out? So what I like doing when I get into a situation like this is I like to back up before the verse and go after the verse to get my context, right? And so, so I really want to get the full picture here of what's going on. And so, um, but again, like this. Actually, if, if you think about it, a good teacher could probably take every one of those verses separately and have a series on each one. Right. There's so much meat in each of those verses 
But how do we condense that into just the 25 minutes we got here today, right? So um, this is where we're going, trying to dig in here. All right, so if we back up to the beginning of the chapter, verse, uh, verse 1, Jesus has summoned all his 12 disciples. He's brought them all here, brought them all together, and he says this. Um, well, verse 1 says, Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them power and authority over unclean spirits to drive them out and to cure all kinds of disease and all kinds of weakness and infirmity. And so if you... If, the last couple of weeks, as we go going through this series, we're, there's a shift happening. You're, we're shifting from receiving, and now he's giving them authority, and now they're going to give. See that shift right there? All right. So I love what Tyler said a couple of weeks ago. He talked about <clears throat> the students moving from students to apostles. Right. Right? It's sent out ones, ambassadors yeah. of Jesus Christ, filled with his spirit to do what he did. Yeah. That was big. And then Rachel, my bride of promise, I introduced her that way last week. <laughs> yeah. That's true. That's true. She is. Um, she made it clear that we all have our own personal discipleship walk with the Lord. And it's personal and it's intimate. Yes. Absolutely phenomenal. God wants to walk this out with us. Absolutely powerful. So then in the next several verses, uh, it's really interesting because he starts just going line by line and giving insight, giving uh, instructions. So <clears throat> just before they go out, it's like it's almost like a military briefing. Mm -hmm. As I just glance over, it's like a military briefing, and he's just giving them insight on what to, uh, what's about to happen. Um, huh, okay, so there's a couple things ran through my head. As I was uh, thinking about this, writing this down, I said, is it military briefing or is it the mama briefing before they go into the grocery store? <laughs> <laughs> right, right? Is it, you know, is it okay? Before we go in there, you will hands in the cart. You will not touch anything. You will not. <laughs> I don't think it was quite like that. Uh, but, but humorous anyways. <laughs> so, but no, I think... I think the closest thing I could come to this is like a coach's briefing before the big game, uh -huh. before a big game, you know, and, you know, I coach football, I coach other sports as well, and I'm very, you know, it's just familiar territory for me, and it's my language mm -hmm. of, like, even, even with my kids, I like, before we go do something, it's like, hey, this is what we're about to do, you know, so I do this heads up, and then before we get into what we're about to do, and so there's a level of comfort that comes when you get that heads up, right? There's a level of a level of security when you know it's like, oh, okay, that's what's set before me. Yeah. Okay, that's that's where we're going. So this is really what the feel I get when I look at this. All right. Um. All right. Got that. All right. So now we have to step back and really kind of get a little perspective here of the situation because. In the grand scheme of, of the whole picture of our timeline, our time on earth, not just our time, but I'm saying mankind, when Jesus came into the world, it was a very dark period, right? And so have this picture, as we're going into this, have this picture of a huge dark room, let's say the size of a football field, huge dark room, and Jesus enters into the picture. What do you see? Light, right? First thing that happens is he steps into the room and he's pure light. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole paradigm shift now happening, right? There's this, there's this whole dark period up until this time, and there's been glimpses of light through his prophets, there's been glimpses of light through the different people that he sent, God sent messages through. But at the time, when Jesus enters the room, like it's very clear, he is the light of the world, right? Yeah. So now there's a whole paradigm shift, right? We understand that Jesus is living on a whole nother plane. He's a, a whole different operating system that, that the world is not familiar with. Mm. So when the Pharisees and Sadducees are asking him questions, they're asking literal statements. And then when they hear back from Jesus, they're hearing 
of literal, they're, they're thinking through their head the literal meaning of his words, but he's operating, he's speaking of something totally different, That's right? Yeah. Yeah. He's speaking of a whole nother realm, and he's introducing this new paradigm. He's introducing. So here, we're caught up in the middle of this conversation, and Jesus is giving this insight to his disciples. He's given them this, um, well, this new paradigm. He's introducing this new paradigm. So he's having them operate in this new realm. So, all right. So we got this paradigm idea of light. He's the light. Come into this dark place. And so as I read along, as my first glance, this is, this is what sticks out to me. Okay. Jesus wants them entering into this mission with truth. Right? He's, he's not hiding anything, and he's letting them know what's going on. He wants them sober-minded and confident in who they are, yeah. Yeah. who they're speaking about, who they're representing. He wants them operating on a different plane than the civilians that they're going to see. Mm. Right? I, I want to make that distinction, right? As an officer going into civilian territory, I mean, there is a very clear distinction between civilians and authority. So this is what Jesus is doing. Your authority, and then you're going to operate. But you're welcoming, welcoming people into this new paradigm, in this kingdom, right? He's bringing them in, in this kingdom. <clears throat> in God. Right? This new operating system is in Him. So, now remember, Jesus Came into this world not cheating, not floating through life inside a bubble, <laughs> oblivious to the human condition. He arrived fully man, feeling every emotion to its yeah. fullest, completely aware of the tempter and the fleshly desires. Mm. What was happening here was he was giving his disciples a heads up, an inside scoop, a behind the scenes view of what to expect in public. Mm. In this different operating system, they need his perspective. Yeah. That's good. It's a different paradigm. It's a whole nother level. <laughs> <laughs> That's an inside joke for Rachel and I that it felt inappropriate for here. So as I go back and reread this, this is the thing is this is what I hear him saying. Okay? First thing he did was he clarified who's the boss. Right? Verse 28. But rather be afraid of him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Don't worry about anybody else. Wow. Don't, worry, don't worry about anybody else. God's the boss. Yeah. Then he gets into the thick of it here. Alright? He says, here's what to expect. People will come against you. But who's got your back? Mm. Be on guard against men. But I will give you the words. People may not see what's done to you. But God your Father will expose it. Yeah. Don't worry about what they do to your body. Even if they kill it. Worry about the Father who has true control of your body and your soul. Yeah. Come on, this, this, see, you see? Now, to me, it's now speaking English. Now, right, right here. Talk to God. To, uh, excuse me. Talk to God in a quiet place, and then go shout back. Wow. Listen for His still small voice. Uh, let me back up. Talk to God in a quiet place, and what He says there, shout that on the rooftops. Then listen for his still, still small voice and then go shout back to him. Yeah. This is life or death. Acknowledge me, God, before men, and I will acknowledge, acknowledge you before my dad. Deny me before men, and I will deny you before my father. See the gravity of it kind of shifts now, right? When we step, like this is all about this discipleship, right? This the series is what we're talking about. And if we're stepping into this discipleship and we are saying yes to God, then we're saying yes to that authority. And we are saying yes to that different paradigm. 
We're saying yes to that different operating system. So at first glance, this looks like Jesus right now in this scripture taking time to set the expectations. Yeah. Yeah, to set the ground rules. Yeah. Okay? <clears throat> and he's literally covering everything. He's talking about everything. So nothing hits them blindside. Mm -hmm. He doesn't want them unaware of the battle. Right. This is similar to some parents who do that for their children. And some coaches who do this for their sports teams. Mm -hmm. See, I mentioned that earlier. Like we give that heads up. Hey, this is what to expect. <clears throat> There's value in get doing this. There's value in giving a heads up to your children. Now, I gotta admit, when I grew up, my parents didn't say a thing. <laughs> it was it was Sunday afternoon. A lot of times this happened on a Sunday afternoon. All of a sudden, my dad would turn around. And go, hey, let's go visit somebody. Not a phone call or nothing. There was no cell phones back then. So we just show up, knock at the door and say, hey, can we come and visit? <laughs> no hands up. That's not cool. <laughs> just say, we like the heads up. <laughs> so if you're coming over, just call first. Call first. <laughs> I heard a pastor say once, that's what closets are for. If someone shows up, just throw everything in the closet. <laughs> Okay, there's value in giving the heads up. Um, huh. And the follow through, the comfort in the follow through. That's good. So, you know, I've noticed this in my kids. So when we give them a heads up, they have this expectation of what's to come. But if, like, that was a big letdown too. My dad was inconsistent in that when I was growing up. And so it was difficult to actually put trust in that, right? It's like, okay, they said this, but but there's no follow through. So it's just this constant letdown. So this, there's no respect, well, a little respect for authority, right? So when there's no follow through, so important for that follow through to come through. It's good, yeah. Okay? Um, so now I, I need to bring some attention to the, the, another thought here. But every so often, one of these, okay, I'm gonna, I'm gonna put it in the analogy of players or children. Every once in a while, one of these children will forget what the expectations are. Yeah. One of the players will forget what's to come, or, or they're brand new. They've never experienced it before, okay? Um, these, they don't know what these expectations are. So this, this thought struck me. It's like, what if you had a brand new person walk on a football field to play the game, and they get hit from, from behind? Hey, that's not fair! What do they hit me for? Like this, right? There's this, like they're incredulous. I can't believe you hit me. That's not, well, that's part of the game. We all know it's football. It's part of the game. Yeah. Right? So, like, so now here's the disciples going out of the public and stuff happens. Well, this way did not caught unaware. That's good. Right? Come on. So, a couple other um, analogies here. Um, <laughs> this is actually funny. Um, so, uh, imagine a swimmer, uh, somebody volunteering to try the swim team, and they jump in the water and they start crying because they got wet. <laughs> what's, what's the expectation here? Or how about walking in the coffee shop, not knowing it's a coffee shop, looking up in the menu and saying, all they're selling is coffee. <laughs> What kind of place is this? You see, you see where that? <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> uh, this is a lot funnier in my head. So. <laughs> <laughs> now we laugh at this, and we say, "Well, what did they expect right. when they when they did this?" For those familiar with these situations, that's that's normal, right? We walk on the football field to get hit, blocked, tackled, shoved, and even pancaked, depending <laughs> on the situation. Yeah. That's normal. Yeah. It's, it's normal. To step into the pool of water, you're going to get wet. That's normal. Yeah. Right? Um, I, had, I had to put this joke down. I said, if you jump in the water and you put Vaseline on first, <laughs> you're probably not going to get wet if you got the Vaseline on. <laughs> <laughs> I had a funny moment with God, <laughs> right? <in his> <laughs> so, 
And then we, I think we all can understand the expectation of walking into a coffee shop, right? That scenario, it's normal to have coffee on the menu in a coffee shop. Yeah. yeah. Right? So this is this is where we're going. Jesus is setting the expectations. He is letting them know what the new normal is. Yeah. yeah. They've yeah. stepped in that new operating system. This is the new normal. It's going to be he's helping his students and giving them the proper perspective. Right? Is this any different for us? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, there's this there's this joke in um, well a lot of businesses. When you're in the people business, usually the issue is people. <laughs> right? There's a lot of issues. So, but this is what Jesus is saying. You're going out to address people. You're going out to meet people as disciples. This is what we're drawing in. We're pulling in. We're, we're going into the kingdom. We're going into the harvest. And we're harvesting his children. Yeah. We're going after his children, right? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, at this point, once I got to this part in my in, in my preparations here, I had just had to stop and like I, I needed to take a deeper look. You know, just that to me, like the rest of that was just kind of skimming the surface. And it, what we're wanting to do. Like, as speakers doing a series and as pastors, and I, I know this from Adam and Corey, we want to go to the deep waters, intending the pun as well. <laughs> we want to go to the deeper waters, right? We want to go to that deeper place. God wants to access us here, yeah. not up here, yeah. not in the cranium, not in the head. We don't want knowledge. It's in the heart yes. where life comes, where it bubbles over, where it bubbles up. Yeah. That's that place where it matters. Behind closed doors when no one else is looking. What bothers you? What what's that place that's uh that be grating against something going on? Like it, that's where he wants to access. That's where God wants to operate from. So I just sat back and I stopped. I just thought, well what's deep what's deeper than that? I just started thinking about Jesus. And I'm like, whoa, Jesus. Who is Jesus? Who's talking here? This is Jesus talking. This is the, his red letters on the page. Mm -hmm. This is our Messiah speaking. Yeah. The Son of the living God. That Son that is so intimate with the Father that He does nothing else but what he sees his father do. It's that Jesus. Jesus, the Prince of Peace. The one that has done so many things in this short time on earth that if it all was recorded, there would not be enough books to tell all the stories. Right. This is the son that told Thomas, if you've seen me, you've seen the father. Yeah. Then the Lord opened my eyes in that moment. I realized it wasn't Jesus sitting there. This was the Father speaking. It was the Father speaking to His 13. You see that? Jesus was sitting there. So, okay, i got to apply it to this moment. Because, so, as I prepare, as most speakers prepare, we're going for the deeper waters, right? And so when we pray, we don't want our words to come through. We want the Father's words to come through, right? So in John, uh, 1 John 4, 17, I think it is, it says, that as he is in this world, so are we. Yeah. Okay, there's that access. So here, if we're filled with the Holy Spirit, then it's actually his. So Jesus is the first one set the tone here. And he's sitting there, also a student of his Father, Listening, watching his father, but he's speaking. God is speaking through Jesus. And this changed the whole conversation for me. So this is where we went. So what does a father do? Okay, so it's, if, if that's the father sitting there with his 12 disciples, just giving them all authority and to do all those things, to give, to give freedom, to give freely, to give access to the kingdom, do all those things, and he's sitting there. What does a father do? What does a father do? A father gives identity, a father gives purpose, and a father gives direction. Yes. Okay? Yes. What does he impart? 
He imparts wisdom and knowledge through experience. Okay, so, because every person on the planet needs to know who they are, identity, right? They need to know why they are created, yes. purpose, and where they are going. Yes. Direction. So, and then the father, I get to be dad in my house, I get to impart the smarts, and <laughs> through my life experience, I get to give wisdom and knowledge to my children, right? So if the father is sitting in that role, in that place, speaking through Jesus to Jesus and the 12 disciples, then all of a sudden I got a glimpse of another, just another depth of the father. And he reminded me of a story. Oh, I'm going to have to move. All right, here we go. Um, this is what he reminded me, okay? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to read through this, and this is going to take us into ministry time, okay? Uh, so I'm reminded of a family. He gave a picture of this family he gave me years ago. And I see this picture of a man at work for the day. Then at the end of the day, he prepares to go home to be with his family. He sets his tools down, whatever they may be, a pen, computer, hammer, badge, whistle, textbook, whatever it is, he sets it down so he can go home. This man has a family, a wife, and two kids. Me, I applied it to me as like three kids. Three kids. I upgraded. Upgraded. Um, as he arrives home, he pauses just before he touches the door. This is where he does his daily routine. One more time, he does an internal check to see if he left work at work. That's good. To see if he let go of all the possible negative emotions of the day, of the day's battles. He cleanses his emotions. He cleanses his thoughts, the to-do lists, the stresses, the cares. He lets them go. He wants to go in free. He wants to go in full. Full of good. Full of love and life. Because he knows whatever he brings home will be multiplied. This is pure fertile soil across that threshold. He's nurtured that over years. He wants to be ready to bring his best home. This is his safe place as well. He takes one last breath to breathe out any last weights or concerns so he can be free bless his family. Mm. He wants them to know they are his delight. And he wants his face to show it. His eyes to show it. He doesn't want them to be tainted by what he had to face in the day. Mm. In this picture, I saw him enter his home full of light and love. He was immediately greeted at the door, first by his wife, then his children tackling him to the floor in a joyous embrace. As they connected, they moved over to the couch where they told each other stories and jokes they missed while they were apart. This is the picture I have of the Father, full of life, full of love. As a child, he protects me from the outside world. That's the dad I see sitting with his 13. <clears throat> but now these children have grown up. They now work with Papa. That's good. In his business. Yeah. They answer the call. They said yes to him. Now comes a new conversation. Same Papa. Same routine coming home. But now it's his children's turn to pick up the mantle. Yeah. You've said yes to the call and no to civilian life. Mm -hmm. Now Father God wants to tell you how things really work. Yeah. To give you a heads up on what you will face. Not for you to turn tail and run. Not to set you up for failure. Right. The conversation comes now because he sees himself in you. The conversation comes because he knows 
His nature is in you. The briefing. Okay? This, this Matthew 10. The briefing. The conversation. This briefing comes because he believes in you. You now get to hear his heart. Nothing hidden. Nothing held back. Full transparency. A whole new operating system. Full authority. In dad's business. His mantle is weighty. Can't be held loosely. And it fits you. It fits you. Yeah. Now, if we go back to that list, let's listen with a whole new set of eyes. This, if I could, Aaron, if you could help me here. With Father's heart speaking in this moment. Let's reread this. Mm. Who's the boss? The one that can control your body and your soul. Here's the thing of it. This, this is the deep part. People will come against you. But who's got your back? Be on guard against men. But I will give you the words. People may not see what's done to you. But God, your Father, will expose it. Don't worry about what they do to your body, even if they kill it. Worry about the Father who has true control of your body and soul. Talk to God in the quiet place. And what he says there, shout that on the rooftops. Listen for his still small voice. Then go shout that. This is life or death. Acknowledge me before bed and I will acknowledge you before death. Deny me before bed. I will deny you before my father. Take time. Read the whole chapter. There's so much meat in there. And it's the Father speaking. Don't let it just sit in your cranium between your two ears. Let it have that space from your heart. Let it, let it pull up that, the chemicals you need yeah. to process this. Let it go deep. So if I can pray now just really getting the sense right now that father's sitting down on his favorite chair he's pulled you close right at his side you can feel his ribs you can feel him shaking when he laughs he chuckles you can feel the deep place you hear him breathing let him
Can I have you all stand? Yeah, give Kevin a hand. Can you all stand because I don't think I will look at Matthew 10 or Luke 10. Jesus is marching orders quite the same way again. I love it, brother. Thank you so much. Um, can I invite our ministry team down? These men and women would love to pray with you, would love to minister to your heart, would love to partner with you. Um, because the reality is sometimes it's hard to hear God's voice. Sometimes it's hard to, to see what's going on between you and him. I, and when we have these, these gathering moments at the end where we invite you to, to ministry, to prayer, it's not like the service is over. It's actually a chance for you to say, I want to step into a place where I can't do this on my own right now. You know, sometimes ministry prayer is just saying, Somebody else step with me, you know, into that prayer moment, into the, into the things that God's doing. The things maybe he's teaching you after hearing from Kevin this morning or the things that he's saying, I want to give you freedom in life from this part that feels broken. So that's why we invite you guys to prayer at the end of every service because we believe that God wants to do something miraculous every time we gather together. He wants to speak something new towards your life. Up on the screen behind me are some of the things we think like God is doing. Some of the things that he's up to, some of the ways he's spoken to some of our team and, and said, hey, I want to minister to that in, in the men and women and, and kids' lives this weekend. And so we're always asking God what he's up to, but we will literally pray for anything. Um, we'll invite God to do anything in your life. I encourage some of you, if you've never made a decision for Jesus or if you've never said yes to baptism, maybe today is the day to come and talk to somebody about one of those two things um, as we wrap up with prayer as well. If you're new with us today, um, please meet us at the Connect Corner and ask any questions that you might have. Let me pray one final blessing over us. Father, you're so good. God, I, I know for me personally, I heard your voice today. I heard your voice through, through my friend Kevin. And I, I heard you speaking new things into me. And I thank you, Jesus, for the fact that you are a speaking God. A God that won't leave us nor forsake us, that won't leave us alone, that wants to not only go with us into the difficult parts of bringing your kingdom into dark places, but wants to talk to us before we even go. I just love that picture that you want to speak to us so that you can work and move through us when we're out doing your kingdom stuff. I thank you, Jesus, that in this moment, you're going to bring your healing touch. You're going to bring your presence, your power. We thank you, Holy Spirit, that you're going to move and bring healing and wholeness where there's brokenness. I thank you that above all other things, because you love us so much, we can trust you. We love you. In your mighty name I pray. Amen. Amen. Come on down for prayer. Meet us out uh, in the lobby. Uh, come back next week uh, as Romy uh, speaks to us about the next part of Matthew 10.